and it's not just going to live in today's vein. It's going to live 30 years from now, and 30 years after that, and 30 years after that. I mean, that's the beauty of what Walt Disney represented. It's like he always saw the future, you know, and his films stay on the shelf. They continue to reinvent themselves, reintroduce themselves to a new audience, and that audience takes that flavor and adds it to their films in the future. And I think because nothing's ever been done like this before, this is your chance, I think, to create that new generation of like, wow, this is a Gecko film, it has really great flavor to it, really great music, I love this character Gecko, and da da da. And, but I think if you see it beyond what it actually can be now, I want to give a shout out to GT Caribbean, um, and normally, the, and just the kids of, of, of the Caribbean who actually aspire to be a, a, in animation. Uh, I just want to tell you, basically, you're looking at a guy who just simply was raised from the dirt. You know what I mean? I'm from Los Angeles. If you guys know anything about the States, you know probably a lot about South Central Los Angeles. Well, that's kind of where I come from. And, uh, and I took everything that, I, that that neighborhood, that my neighborhood could give me and brought it to, uh, and married it with the talent that, that was given to me as an animator and um, kept all of that knowledge and just cut through to, uh, to try to really contribute to this business the way that I have. Um, I got a chance to work on uh, some really great films. And I think, you know, just from a, uh, uh, from a kid who you know, felt like that he wasn't going to necessarily achieve in this business or become an animator. Just want to tell you guys that if I can do it, you certainly can do it. Um, I think they're doing great things in this in this community, on this island, to really support the medium of animation. And I think it is great that they're cutting a the cloth, and cutting a way for you guys to be involved. Just don't be afraid to do it. Like you know, always face those fears of not feeling like that you are maybe worthy or you have the talent. Listen, you're here, you can always um, uh, train yourself to get better. I wasn't a great artist at all, and I actually still don't consider myself a great draftsman, but that doesn't keep me from getting a, um, a, a real stamp in this business, and putting your foot down and making it happen. So I'm just gonna give you guys a shout and some inspiration to like uh, keep it going, man, do your thing. All right, I'm relying on you guys. I want to work with y'all one day. Okay, all right now. This is an industry that actually generates revenue, profit, and creates a lot of jobs. I mean, the reason I want to discuss these numbers with you is because I think it is underestimated in Trinidad and within the cluster how significant this industry and this sector is, particularly to young people. And while, of course, I encourage local content, I also encourage outsourcing. Ontario, of course, it's the same story. 300,000 jobs, 16,000 people employed, etc. And if you look at the UK, um, $1.6 of every $15 comes from the creative industry, if you put it in dollar terms. So in the UK, it is also huge. So how can we discount that in the Caribbean? We can't discount it. And if you look at Colombia, Brazil, and you look at um, Costa Rica, they are creating clusters, and these clusters are creating jobs. Hello, my name is Joan Vogelasang, and I was the president and CEO of Toon Boom Animation out of Montreal. We designed and developed technology for animated productions. Uh, very fortunate to win two Emmys. I'm involved with this wonderful project because there's been a great deal of effort put in by Camille and Anime Carib, uh, studios like Full Circle, to develop this uh, cluster within Trinidad and the Caribbean at large. And I think that there's a great opportunity for not only business development, but employment that takes advantage of the great creativity that is available in Trinidad that will, in fact, result in the growth of the industry. So that's why I'm involved. Everybody's doing a great job, and I'm looking forward to the future. Uh, my name is Jason Lindsay. I'm the managing director of Full Circle Animation. We are a full service production studio based in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, I would say we're the biggest production studio in terms of animation 
production in the Caribbean now. Uh, over the last five years, we have produced a lot of content both locally and abroad, a lot of outsourcing work, and, and that is the vein that this uh, Gecko project comes in. It's a great opportunity for us to get experience producing a property with content that we're familiar with for a global scale. Uh, Camille, this was originally uh, uh, intended for a feature film and we spoke to the property owners about it and we were very excited. Then Camille came to us with the idea um, after discussing it with them of actually doing a TV series which sort of was more aptly suited to what we do because we are a 2D production studio um, and there would be more opportunity for us to be involved as a production company on this project for 2D. Uh, and it also, because uh, episode, episodic TV are in smaller segments, I think it gives us a greater opportunity to really do more. So it's a project we're very excited about. We're looking forward to how it rolls out over the next year and hopefully we get to make a major, um, make a major mark in terms of Caribbean property. The outcome has been amazing. I think we brought all the right people to the table, including investors and directors and artists, um, um, private and public sector, and I am very, very hopeful for what the outcome of this can be. And I would like to thank the people who made it possible, which was the IDB, to make this visit possible. Thank you. guys who would go on to direct movies like Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, Lilo and Stitch, How to Train Your Dragon, uh, Up. All these guys were just sort of my classmates. So in essence, I'm the underachiever. So, you know, um, that's why I'm so happy to be here with you guys. Underachieving uh, every day. That's me. Um, so... So we were sort of, our thing was really to absorb animation and kind of, we kind of learned it all together, which was really great. Um, and eventually once I understood exactly what I was doing, I mean, mind you, if you know anything about the history of Disney, I mean, my teachers were guys who worked on movies like, you know, Sleeping Beauty and Snow White, Peter Pan, all the really essential Disney movies from like from the 30s all the way up to like the 60s and 70s. But mind you, they're old guys by now, you know. And and I didn't necessarily completely appreciate the lineage that was in front of me. I didn't know a whole lot. And I remember specifically uh, the day when uh, this guy came to the studio, an animator, and he was talking on and on about how. I didn't really like the stuff that I did at the studio, and uh, that role that I had in that film was just kind of like, ah, once I figured it out, it wasn't no big deal. Kind of a real irascible old guy that I got disinterested in really quick. And that guy ended up being my hero, actually. I didn't know. This was Milk Call. Um, Milk Call's like still the prima, the god of animation in, in sort of, in my, you know, in my world. Like, no one has ever really achieved the character animation performance that he's actually put on screen still lives. I mean, it's still, the characters still live vividly in films like, like I mentioned, like Peter Pan, um, Man, Sleeping Beauty, Sword in the Stone, Jungle Book. He was Shere Khan, you know, in Jungle Book. Like those, I mean, he designed those characters outside of animating those characters. Uh, his swan song, when he was like in his 70s, he animated uh, Madame Medusa, right, from uh, Rescuers Down Under. Rescuers, not Rescuers Down Under, but Rescuers. That was a piece of work that he did when he was in his 70s. So, uh, so there's still hope for me. That's, that's, that's how, kind of how I see that. That's the beauty of animation, actually, is that you guys are young right now. You guys don't know a lot about it, all right? But you've got a good 50 years to kind of figure this out. It's kind of how I see it, you know what I mean? It's like, dude, I got a good, you know, 30 years left on my career easily. So, and there's so many things I want to accomplish, you know, still. So, two minutes in town, and one girl going to Holy Name Convent, and one going Malik Senior Comprehensive. It might be really 
stereotypical because those things have changed considerably and mutated because you have the Malik senior comprehensive girl getting on more like the Holy Name girl now sometimes, you know. But just for us to get some animation live, here they are. Who is who? Well, it could be whoever they want. We go fix it out. We will work it out when we see it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> express this morning was I heard the word color when you think of Caribbean and I'm talking about the, the, the project that Richard have you guys working on. The Geico or the Gecko. Who is pronounced it? Geico? I just said lizard. Huh? It's a Gecko. I'm sorry. The Gecko. And I already started to think about how I am seeing, not an animator, but just as a storyteller, how I am seeing this uh, gecko. And uh, I see him, you know, we walk a different way. You talk about the vibes, you know. You know, uh, we walk the vibes we have as a people. We bunk. And uh, just now Mr. Smith was talking about hands. We use a lot of hands. He didn't have to explain that to us. We Trinidad talk with we hand. And... Uh, a very colorful character. I could see him with a little trimmy bandana on his head or on his he neck representing who he is. One of the things I do as an actor is I study people. You know, people see Granny and think Granny was really easy to do. But my director, Tony Hall, one of the best directors we have, for, to get ready for Granny, I had to go on the promenade and watch senior citizens for two to three weeks sit there for hours and just watch. Because of an old person would walk, it's totally different how a 17 year old would walk. Because if he back to front and has a big head. So I had to enter the stage singing and dancing like this. Because I have to see my audience. I'm not really seeing the audience. The supposed face given that impression. So you always have to be conscious of the character that you want to animate and you want to put forward. Even when I was, um, I was working for Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, I think we were in Alaska or something, as I know with a, a friend of mine, <coughs> excuse me, from Costa Rica, and I used to tease him a lot about his accent and if he, Lime in with his other Costa Rican um, brethren, and they would speak in Spanish. And I would say, ay, papi, pequere, 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 speak English. But yet, when I was speaking with him, I would speak as clear as possible. I'm going to say, hey, they were watching, what are you going to do? Because you wouldn't understand that. And we were walking along the main corridor of, of the ship once. And I'm, I'm speaking regularly to him. I think I'm being regular to him. And then along came some other trainees. And I switched from speaking to Diego and going, yeah, so we, we're going to do and we have this activity. And yeah, and hey, so we're saying, yeah, we could go down to and then we could do this and we could do. And he turned to me and said, hey, mommy, pick it, pick it, pick it, speak English. And it's only then you realize how much we, as a people, switch our actual language and our dialect to fit into what needs to be 